Happy Sunday, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Angel Swing Weekend Chat here with June, Espresso, Casper, Johannes. And we have Maddie Kay on the show today. Maddie is from Tallinn in Estonia. I met Maddie last December through the amazing omnipotent health and fitness community. And I've been very inspired by her personality and her diverse background. And before we start, let's hear the Genesis story and the mission of the Angel Swing from our co-host, Casper, first. Thanks so much, June. Okay, here we go. We're at the Angel Swing, an international NFT art gallery and podcast show founded by friends around the world who met through our beloved Metal Angels project. Espresso Johannes are from Europe. And of course, our special guest, Maddie, today is from Estonia. Yoon is from the US and our other co-host, the Rebel, and myself, we are both from Asia. We are driven by our common passion to showcase independent artists and their art and helping them stand out from the crowded NFT market that is dominated by pretty much generative 10k PFP projects. We showcase the art in an on-cyber virtual gallery for the NFTs, as a larger collection of art naturally brings a cross-pollination of viewership, and this has helped quite a few of our artists reach collectors through sales. We have organically grown since into a community of artists and collectors, but most importantly, friends, with regular Twitter spaces like these, which are then recorded into podcast formats in Spotify and YouTube. The easiest way to get in touch with us would be to join our cozy Discord, Everything's on our link in our bio, so hit us up if you're an indie artist who needs help featuring your art, or if you just want to join a friendly art NFT community to chat. We'd like to mention that nothing on this show should be construed as investment advice. This podcast is for informational purposes only. All right, that's it. Back to you, Yoon. Thank you for the intro, Casper. Welcome, Maddie. So glad to have you with us. Tell us first about what life is in Estonia. Hello to everybody. Hello, hello. <laughs> I'm Maddie. I'm really blessed to be here. <laughs> I'm just going to calm my nerves by saying that this is my first time doing such thing to be, I guess, interviewed or just sat down and be in the hotspot and talk more deeply about myself, my life, my work, my thinking. Life in Estonia is pretty cold still. We are starting to get more daylight <laughs> slowly. But yeah, it can be a little bit sad <laughs> during the winter season. So geographically, Estonia is pretty close to Finland, right? Yes, it's just a short boat ride across the bay. It's about 80 kilometers. <laughs> Sorry for US people. <laughs> I live in the metric world. And Estonia has, as I heard, a very developed digital space. This is this right? Yeah, I think it's been said that Estonia is a very digital fronting nation. I think we're the first nation to vote online and all this kind of thing. It's very ingrained. We have a lot of tech companies and innovation going on here. It's a big part of our kind of nation, I guess. <laughs> Kasper has been pretty interested in Estonia. And are there any questions you have for Maddie? Actually, I'm really interested because I would say, as humbly as I can, that I do travel quite a bit. And unfortunately, I don't really hear much about Estonia as a country, even though after I started Googling and reading up a bit more about it, it seems to be a really interesting, developed, transparently governed country. Very similar to... Also, by the way, I'm from Singapore. It does sound that it's pretty similar in terms of how you guys are a small country in terms of population, but still managed to get... a great economy going. So I was really interested to find out how the country is like, what are your top attractions, for example, let's say if I visited Estonia. Just a very simple example. Yeah, we're super, super tiny. And it's wonderful, actually, to even, you know, when I say I'm from Estonia, to people be like, oh, I've actually heard something about it, because we are super tiny, but we do our best. <laughs> I always feel awkward when people who are visiting here ask for advice from me as a local. But I'm really a nature person and I do believe that we have a lot of beautiful nature. We don't have mountains, but all the bog lakes and the swamps and the forest and the seasides and the islands really make up for that. That's beautiful. I guess that's a lot more than what we have in our country here in Singapore. We are pretty much a city nation. So yeah, it's always nice to take a break in nature. One last question. Does everybody speak great English like yourself in Estonia? We do speak quite a bit of English. However, I personally 
personally, when I happen to meet somebody who is also Estonian in an international group of people, and they've only heard me speak English, they are so super weirded out <laughs> when they hear that I'm actually Estonian, because my accent over the years gotten very comfortable <laughs> and not very Estonian sounding accent at all. But yeah, we even have the problem amongst young people that they speak Estonglish, which is Estonian, which is sprinkled with English words every now and then, here and there. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the same in most countries. In Singapore, we speak Singlish. So, yep, nothing to be ashamed of, as long as we can understand each other. But anyway, let's not get too distracted from the main topic, which is, of course, your art. Let's ask Mandy to introduce herself and her art. We're very curious to hear about your story, your inspiration. Take us through it. All right, I'll try to do my best. Nowadays, I call myself an interdisciplinary creative, which involves all the different fields that I operate in when it comes to creativity and applying it in the world. Most of my professional career, I've spent being a designer, actually. I ran my own apparel brand where I would do artful wearables. I would actually produce things in the house. On the design side as well, I love branding projects and I've been doing them more in the past year or so. And then I have my very expressive personal art side, which I've been focusing more and more while I've been going through the transition from very design-focused creative career to more expanding into the areas of being connected to my true self and telling the stories of my human experience and finding context and ways how to share those with people. Yeah, maybe you guys can help me with some guiding questions because I could just rant and rant, but I want to be as valuable and in line as I can. <laughs> Absolutely. I think we're all here to hear that rant, right? Hear your story. So that's perfectly fine. But yeah, so you have a design background you mentioned and also from way back in design school or at the Academy of Arts. If I understand it correctly, right? Yeah, that actually gives me an idea to go more into about my professional background, sort of, or my education and the whole journey of the past 10 years, which I've been kind of active on the journey of finding myself and all the ways that I can create things into the world and be a person. It's a very colorful story, how I've become who I am today. I have a bachelor's degree in textile design, which... For a lot of people can be a little bit surprising because a lot of what I do has to do more about branding and graphic design and illustration and all these other things. But even getting to the point of studying textiles, it actually started way back when I was in school. Before high school, everybody is trying to figure out which way to go in life, who we want to become. And Somehow, my answer to the things that I felt were interesting to me, I combined a little bit of creativity with something that seemed realistic based on my worldview at the time. I decided that I will become an architect. And I spent four years roughly just, you know, taking extracurriculum courses to learn technical drawing and all kinds of things about architecture. And then when I actually went and studied, it took me half a year and an exam of building materials <laughs> to walk out of that exam and be like, wait, I think I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> that was the first moment where I just trusted my instinct of, well, I had this idea, this image in my head of what I'm supposed to become. And I don't think that fits me. And I have no idea where I'm going next, but I'm going anyway. And that's how I started searching around. And that's how I got into graphic design. I actually went and studied it in school a little bit, had some interesting, enlightening experiences in regard of that. And through that process of learning the tools of a graphic designer and creating visuals, I happened to have a chance to work with a local fashion designer and she was like, design me a pattern for fabric. And it opened up this whole new world of patterns to me. And I was like, whoa, this is what I like. There's something there. I have to dig into this. And nerd as I was, and I still am, I was like, you know what? I still want to go deeper than that, than just to become a pattern designer and just do that. And I decided to go study textiles because that's like the biggest industry. And it also has something to do with like crafting things that has always been very important to me. And that's how I ended up 
studying textiles and going deeper into learning about the material itself and all these wonderful ways how textiles are made. And then when I graduated, I had already started my own small business. And yeah, and then I went from there. <laughs> That's kind of like the professional story. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. So many interesting aspects of the creative industries like design, textile, architecture even, and art. So that sounds amazing. And I see we have a question from Go Scrabble there. Feel free to go. Yeah, thanks, Expresso. Hi, Maddie. I'm, I'm Rebel. I'm also from Singapore. So I noticed your logo, GM Poet Society, it reminds me of the movie Dead Poet Society. I was just wondering if there was any reference to that movie. Yes, very much was. And I really love that eye of yours to notice this. Uh, I always, it, within my work, I always sprinkle this kind of metaphors. When I was studying graphic design, that approach in that specific department where I was studying it was very directed to like conceptual thinking and like more even towards like contemporary art kind of. And that's where I learned to really go deep and think about my work in a conceptual way. And even now, when I create like this very commercial looking things there's always some sort of backstory there's always something even in my artist name Maddie Kai there is so much I haven't really publicly spoken yet about that has a very deep meaning to me but yeah the GM Poet Society project which is like the main thing that I've allowed to become alive or just that actually sprouted out from that whole experience of being on Twitter and in this space It became, of course, with the GM culture. And I was like, okay, I see the value in that. It's an interesting way of interacting with people. Let me do that. But let me do that in my own way, which is like something that is very a pattern of mine has always been. <laughs> so I was like, let me do it my way. And since I had been playing with AI quite a bit, and there's this whole story of like, why nature and organic forms and these kind of things, we can go back to that topic a little bit deeper later. But I can now connect all of that. And then I was thinking like, you know, the movie Dead Poet Society, to me, the message of it is sort of doing things your own way or following your own path. And for some reason, I was like, you know what, I'm going to call the project GM Poet Society. I don't know if people will take all the bits that I put in there that created that whole thing. But yeah, it is connected to that movie <laughs> and there is also another thing with that project something from a previous thing that I tied together with this was GM if you've seen some of those works every work has a name that has GM written out with gigantic marbles and that grew out from something I used to do with a friend of mine to kind of spice it up and make it more poetic. And that's why I was like, oh, GM Poets really just fits together like a beautiful puzzle. And that's usually how my works come out. I piece together all these unexpected pieces from the chaos. <laughs> yeah, it, it happened to be one of my favorite movies. I'm not sure if the younger generation knows about this movie though. So for everyone's benefit, it's one of those old movies by the late Robin Williams. In case anyone is interested, yeah. Oh, Captain, my Captain. <laughs> yeah, glad <laughs> yeah, to know. Thank you. I was just thinking about the title that it somehow sounded familiar and I just realized that I actually saw the movie in German, so it's actually had a different title. <laughs> Let's move on. Maddie, I saw on your website that you define yourself as someone who lives to create and creates to grow. So how does the creative part give your life purpose? Oh, that's a big question and a big story, how everything weaves together with, as I said, with most of my being and what I'm doing in life. <laughs> Yeah. At some point early in my 20s, I realized that I will, like, I told a story about how I walked out from architecture school and was like, okay, what next? And that was the big breakthrough moment for me, looking back, after which I started to just follow my intuition of, okay, this seems interesting. There's curiosity in me to go towards that direction and I'll just do that. And that took me on this wonderful journey <laughs> that I allowed myself to be on that I chose to be on to do all these different kind of things, learn different kind of skills within craft, art, design, and all that. 
What was the question? <laughs> My mind is wonderful at sometimes getting itself lost. <laughs> It's about actually meaning life. This is a general topic mm. I enjoy diving into. So my question was related to what do you think people can do to find the meaning in life? And I realized that for you, creating art or general crafting is a very important part in your life. So yeah, related to that. Yeah. For some reason, there's always been something inside of me that says, if this feels right, go that direction, even if it is going upstream. And even back in school, the majority of my life, I have suffered a lot because I've been an outsider of many things. But for some reason, I always stick to it to just trust my gut and do what I felt was needed to be done <laughs> by me, maybe, or follow that intuition. And then later on, by just trusting myself in that way to follow my intuition of being where I'm supposed to be doing and doing what seems interesting or exciting or giving me the feeling of like I feel alive just over time I kept putting in the reps of doing that and then when I looked back and I was like looking for a pattern of well if somebody asks you what's your mission in life or what's your purpose or what makes you tick I realized that just creating is something that it just aligns with something deeper and truer inside of me that just makes sense. That might sound like very ethereal, but to go more into like practical journey of finding that or how did that kind of express itself. When I was younger, I loved gift giving. That was one of my favorite things. Of course, right now I say it because that really shaped my journey in life, who I've become. Because when I would have a close person, like a relative or a friend or somebody have their birthday, I would take it so super seriously, and I still do, to think about that person during the whole year, notice what they have maybe said that, oh, this is meaningful to them. And I would catch those small bits or try to figure it out and then craft something that really answered that to make sure that when I gift them something, it will be something so special to them and so meaningful to them. I just did for some reason and I kept doing it and then it transformed over time into a career where I started my own brand because I wanted to do more of that to create things that make people joyful and spark them up and then over time when I expanded more into other kind of creativity where I would design brands for example which is one of my favorite things to do as well with that it's not apparent maybe that how is that meaningful to people but there is something about the recognition of brands or something that you're like oh this is familiar to me that moment is still something similar that you're like oh cool like you're connecting with it and uh, yeah over time to me if somebody asks me what my mission or purpose in life is I just say that I'm here to create or craft things or experiences that are meaningful to other people And that's that. As simple as that. It took me a long time, a lot of struggle. How do I identify myself? Because I do this design and then I do textile design and then I do that art. And I struggled for so many years to be able to call myself, who am I <laughs> as a professional? Like when you meet somebody, they're like, so what do you do? And I'm like, yeah, I do this and that. But now I'm like, you know what? I'm this creative powerhouse who just goes around and tries to make things that are touching like capable of touching other people in meaningful ways and i think that's where i find meaning touching other people and making a world a, a little bit brighter and better place <laughs> yeah i love that thank you maddie for talking about your mission when you come to the point that you realize what your mission is it, it may sound pretty simple but the journey to it can take sometimes pretty long just to clear your own thinking and filter through all these noises and but yeah was interesting to hear about that that's so very true <laughs> okay so this plant motive maddie that you use in your art over and over again or in your craft and art i know you're someone who likes to use symbols and metaphors to tell a story and i wonder whether plants in general are a symbol for self-growth in your work they are very symbolic i think they also have always been around me and then as the time has gone by i've recognized or started to see like symbolisms in them as well and started to use them more with symbolism i've always been very connected to nature my first years of life i actually got was happy enough to fortunate enough to spend a lot of time at the countryside 
And I would just go around and learn all these plants and just, you know, explore my wilderness. And I think I'm so blessed to have kind of hold on to that side of me, which I think is really helping me to stay true to myself and connected to my authentic self. My mom is a gardener. She just started that in her second youth, I would say, like after the kids are grown up and everything. And so... Because of her, when I now go to the countryside, I also spend a lot of time in the atmosphere of growing plants and that whole presence. And for some reason, I've always had the respect towards them. I always admired them. And now when I'm creating work or just experiencing life, I have so much respect towards them. And as I said, I really admire them because they carry so many life lessons that we as humans could learn from plants so much. And there's so many beautiful stories when you think about, there is this saying that goes around that when you feel like you've been buried, it's actually like you've just been planted and then you grow out from that dark pit where you were put in and then you become this wonderful thing or what was it that I ran into just very recently I wrote it down the flowers don't chase the bees the flowers just are and then the bees come this is such a powerful story you look into the nature and you notice something at that and then you think okay if I'm a person And I'm trying to figure out a way how to be in this world and in relations with other people. Am I supposed to be chasing something or am I supposed to be here, you know, like growing myself, taking care of myself and making sure that I create flowers (laughs) or blossom. And then that is that beautiful something that is your purpose. And then it'll just happen that the bees will come and you will connect with the right people. These kind of things, I just love. There's so many of those to be found. Or back when I was still running my brand, which I stopped in last September, just go through a necessary transformation within my creative self. Towards the end of my brand or before the pause, I started a series which was called Botanical Tools. And I would kind of portray plants that have some deeper meaning. For example, there is a plant called fireweed, which I've always known as a herb. I drink that as tea. I would go and pick it like in the summer. But then I was like, okay, somehow that plant comes to my consciousness and I feel portraying that. Let me look more into it. I learned that fireweed is the plant where when there has been a fire in the forest, fireweed is the first plant to start growing and help all the other, the ecosystem, I don't know the right terms for it, (laughs) to come to life again as well. And I was like, whoa, that plant just came to me in the moment in my life where I was feeling that I'm in the middle of reincarnation or as a phoenix, like there had been something that has broken around me and now I'm building myself up again. And connecting with plants like that is something that, I don't know, is meaningful to me. And I love to dive more into that. Yeah, totally relate yeah. to your fascination with plants and I'm also very fascinated by plants I have like more than 60 <laughs> indoor plants yeah you just reminded me of a point that I think is crucial to share also or explains a little bit more why there's a lot of plant or organic sort of shapes in my works at some point I was living as people do I didn't really have house plants and then for some reason I started bringing house plants to my home and I realized wow, just a small presence of two plants makes me become more alive. They make me feel at home. We live in these boxes <laughs> so far away from nature. And if you don't take the time to go and bathe in the nature and kind of connect, <laughs> like on the Twitter here, I really love the metaphor of going to touch grass or something. I don't know how that goes exactly. This is one of the things I didn't really intentionally think about. Oh, okay, let's see, like bringing plants into my home That is something that makes me feel a certain way. So maybe I should create things with plants. It wasn't like that. It's never like this very linear connection. But over time, based on my own feelings, I started incorporating more of plant images or kind of their essence in my work. And the GM Poet Society, it's been a wonderful experience. It's been conflicting experience for me. I've gone through the hard work of learning how to draw and create visuals and all these kind of things, like actually crafting things, and then go and jump into the AI and then just produce it as a factory. (laughs) So that has been an interesting experience as well. But playing with AI and creating these like otherworldly botanics, which like they resemble of something, but they're becoming something new. I don't know. That's like 
another way of, I guess, bringing the idea or the image or like the reminder of nature still being there, even though we are spending so much time in indoors, inside of our screens, all that. <laughs> I feel that's a good way to remind of such things as nature is also there. We need to take care of it. We need to spend time there. We need to reconnect with our roots in a way. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. So I wanted to talk more about the GM Poet Society, but first, your art is very defined by organic abstract shapes, as you already mentioned, and you like to use bold colors. So tell us what the meaning behind that is. I think you previously mentioned a bit that mm -hmm. shapes derived a bit from your connection with nature, right? Yes, that's one thing, but there's actually... Again, the deeper backstory, how I think why I lean towards abstract shapes or forms. When I was studying graphic design, as I said before, it was very conceptual, this very intense kind of approach. And there was also like, I got the feeling that those things what I was grading back then, there was so small group of people who even have the capacity or interest to dive into what I was trying to say with what I was doing. And that kind of made me question whether that's where I'm supposed to be, whether these are the kind of people and the kind of work that I should be doing. I had the reaction of going to the other end and being like, no, I want to create things that are universally easily understandable for everybody. Even if there is this deep metaphors, like all these kind of subtexts underneath it, but something that will speak to give an emotional something to anybody. And I think that's why abstract shapes is something that I'm not saying, oh, this is what I'm trying to say. This is my message, but it's more subtle. I haven't really shared those a lot, but there was a time where I was creating this abstract shape, like color landscapes and with those it's like you can look at it and everybody's gonna see different kind of things you start seeing faces like pareidolia it's a thing that humans start to see faces everywhere everybody will have their own experience with the work and i love that feedback because i was like everybody can get something out of it so this was like confirmation that working in abstract is something that aligns with what I'm trying to do here. I'm a hypersensitive person and uh, colors have really strong effect on me. I still wear mostly only black because that makes me feel comfortable, but my work is very colorful and I do work in very harmonious color palettes because they soothe me. The way I'm using color is very intentional to create the sort of feeling that you don't feel like some sort of conflict or disruption in your emotions but it calms you so seeking harmony is something that is very big for me and i think that kind of rounds about my abstract and colors and why i'm using them and the meanings behind that yeah i absolutely love your abstract work and the organic shapes i'm also someone who really love organic shape because of the harmonious feel as you already mentioned you're someone who likes to work with different in crafting different materials, you work with wood and uh, you make murals, you start a generative art and you also make AI art. So you're very diverse and which is very fascinating. Yeah. And so talking first a bit about the GM Poet Society, you mentioned that it has been created with AI, right? So what did you use exactly to make that? Um, yeah, I'm using Midjourney as a lot of us. I do with some of them sometimes manipulate them in Photoshop, tweak it in, in a way that I feel speaks better. <laughs> But so far it's been quite minimal. I am, however, on the background now playing around blending more of my drawn work with AI. I'm still yet to see like what interesting stuff comes out from it. It's pretty exciting, but still a lot of question marks <laughs> where it will end up. <laughs> but yeah, that's mostly my tool right now that I've been exploring. Johannes, you want to ask your question regarding art now? My question is <laughs> half answered now because <laughs> okay. I was wondering about the GM Poets Society pictures. For example, <laughs> number 24 is something which really resonates with me. And here I was struggling with the tools and techniques which were used because I tried to interpret this. Was this painted by hand, procreate, or was there some 3D tool in, uh, involved <laughs> into this because of the gold? But now you said mid-journey, which explains the way of creating it. But maybe we can broaden this question. Yeah, generally, you are doing a lot of different styles. 
And MidJourney is not the only tool. Could you please, from a technical standpoint, because I'm always interested how other artists are doing it, what other tools and techniques you are using for creating your digital pieces? Yeah. So when I'm sketching something with hand, of course, I sometimes use paper, but I do use an iPad with the pen and Procreate. I think there is a pin post also of a summary from last year, which actually has some of my Todemika pieces, which now there has been a pause, but I've picked up creating those again and playing more with that idea. Those have been drawn with Procreate. And yeah, since my background is in graphic design, <laughs> my main tools are like the whole Adobe suit. I use a lot of Illustrator. If I work with more like raster stuff or piecing together already existing images, then I use Photoshop. But yeah, this is mostly my toolkit when it comes to creating visual things. I hope that answers. Yeah, thank, yeah, thank you. I was just wondering how you do it. And I think you answered that question very accurately. And yeah, for me, at first, it was like very foreign to me to call the work that I was doing with Mid Journey like my art, because I had this internal discussion, like we also have it on all the platforms where we are, even in my Facebook amongst people who I was not expecting to discuss whether AI art is art or we should ban that and all these kind of a lot of emotion that is going around about that thing. And initially, I was also feeling puzzled or conflicted, but I had friends encourage me to view it as a tool and play around it and see what comes. And now, Oh, honestly, like I went off and just created a series of this wondrous botanical creatures. I love all of them because they make me feel good. And that's a good indicator that you're creating the right thing, right? <laughs> when it makes you feel like when you go back and you're still like, ah, oh, yeah, that's something that I can't describe, but it makes me feel some way. But now I've been working more with Mid Journey, for example, as a tool. And now I'm playing more with how do I mix that together with what I was either doing before or in parallel with that and seeing how can that elevate or take me to places where maybe I would have not gotten before with some of my works. Hmm. GM Poet Society. Yes, I have made them in NFTs. Like I'm still standing here with my question mark about what kind of work should I be minting? And in general, there's big questions to be answered to me because an artist's career is new to me because I used to identify as a designer for so long, but I was always doing these poetic things on the side. It was just a matter of I decided to identify as a designer, but I've always been creating art also, or even my designs have very big portion of it being pure artistry and have my very own handwriting. Yes, yeah. I can totally agree to that, that there's boundaries between art and design are very thin. For example, looking on the picture number 24 that I pinned, I would say that you polish this a lot with Photoshop because if I'm using Midjourney, the results are not so clean. So I would expect that you invested a lot of time to fix it up, right? Actually, I didn't with that one. They have been really pushing the edge with how they're developing the mid journey and they're in like new versions of it or there's like unexpected stuff. When I first started playing around with it, there was just some level coming out of it. But now I'm finding these weird corners that are so unexpected to me. The piece, the 24, that one actually reminds me of it might just be created as a photo. Like it's a set that he's in a studio and it's super cleaned and everything. Yeah, but yeah you see I my mean, struggles, right? <laughs> it's that's, absolutely that's different. Al that's also a feedback I've gotten from my friends who are not artists, but who are also playing with the AIs to create images. And they're like, but you find a way how to squeeze something different out of it. Like, and I do believe that I take my whole experience from before, the whole package of understanding composition and recognizing how, what kind of color schemes work and all that experience and use that when I'm curating the AI or prompting it and exploring areas of how do I get to what what seems to be something that is worthy of showing to others as well. <laughs> yeah, Espresso wanted to ask a question too, so I would like to hand over to him. And thank you very much for explaining some AI <laughs> stuff to me. Of course, <laughs> my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, I also wanted to comment on this because it's obviously, as you mentioned, it's a big debate going in many parts of society, how to deal with AI mm -hmm. as a tool. And I think I just wanted to point out like how your explanation is the perfect reason why 
AI is a tool in a tool set and it takes a lot more mm -hmm. than just having access to it to actually produce something that's looking good and that's art. And so by adding your good eye and your sense of what you're after, that's really making the mm -hmm. difference. And I think that's, yeah. that's definitely what people need to come to that realization that we have a lot of tools. And this is one of them. And it takes a lot more to create good art which this is a perfect example of. Yeah, like you can produce all kinds of things, but it's so important that what's the story? Why are you doing this? That is that something that speaks to people. And of course, how you're then doing it, but it needs to have a point of view and having a point of view and that being translated to whatever kind of tool you're using, that's the real art. Yeah, exactly. So thank you, Maddie and Espresso, sharing your opinions about AI art. I totally agree on that. And we, in the past, talked a lot about that, too. So in the last couple of minutes, Maddie, why don't you tell us a bit about what you are currently working on, what you plan to work on in the future? Is, it, for instance, generative art something that you also want to try out more? Because I have seen one piece that you created recently. That is a big question, even to myself, <laughs> because I'm kind of in the midst of transitioning from my professional career, because I still keep up with some design work or clients. And then I'm either finding harmony, balancing, juggling <laughs> my more personal art. And I am in the middle of trying to figure out how to merge all of that into one big club of who Maddie Kai is to not have to switch between things, but just fully embody all of my creativity, all of my tools and find the right context where to bring about what I can do with my creativity. But when it comes to what I'm working on more specifically, I always have a bunch of different series, which I have maybe shared a little bit, maybe not, that are in the works. It does maybe seem that when you look at my Twitter and what I share on that pl platform, that this is just only very tiny side of it, but it seems that's all I do, <laughs> which I am working at getting better at sharing more of the variety and the versatility of what I'm all about and what kind of things I have been creating and what I want to be creating and what I am creating. That's always a big challenge to do the deepest work but also take the time to produce the content, to share it in a way. And since I am flux a little bit still with the transformation that I'm going through, it's extra challenging because I need clarity first. <laughs> but back to the question again, what I'm working on, I have focused more on doing physical work since I still consider myself also as a textile designer, for example. And I have some very immaterial ideas that still need to materialize. So I'm working on some of those which they're too ethereal to speak about more <laughs> more precisely or be like, this is exactly what I'm working on. But there are things that I'm working on. And of course, I'm still tinkering with AI, seeing, playing around, connecting some of the series that I've been working to get to some sort of new quality aesthetic story that I feel is now worth sharing in a bigger way with the world. And that's always happening on the background as well. Yeah, I do pro bono design work for an environmental nonprofit at the moment, which is also taking quite a bit of my time. And I just had a wonderful experience making a debut as a design director for a, a whole conference for that organization, which was an amazing experience. <laughs> yeah, that conference that you mentioned, I heard you talking a bit about um, OmniSpace. Your conference happened last week. Yeah, it was last where... weekend. Where you even met Shane Lakiani, right? I found yeah. it so amazing. <laughs> so yeah, yes. I can imagine that it must be a really cool experience. And to me, it was very fulfilling because I got to combine what I do in branding and graphic design with physical, like designing stuff for space. I created the stage set, for example, a photo backdrop for the people to take, you know, like pictures together with their friends. We had gifts for the speakers and I took something from my previous work with my brand where I actually did in-house printing for the t-shirts and the garments that I was making. And I always love the idea of circularity and uh, using the resources that we have in a smart and sustainable way. So I would always put the extra, the leftovers from the print waste and then use those to create something new. And so I brought back one of the 
projects that I did for an exhibition where I just created from the leftovers these beautiful et- etudes, which were like compositions with just abstract shapes. And I took that idea and I printed, I took the symbol of unity, which was a the theme of the conference, and I printed the gift bags for the speakers with the print waste that was connecting that idea with the theme of the conference and bringing all these things together. That was a wonderful experience to get to use. First of all, be trusted to lead the way of the cohesiveness of that experience of the conference and then bring in the whole arsenal of my experiences and skills and make something wonderful for people. That was a big thing for me. (laughs) Yeah, I love that. And I think even so, everything they do is very diverse, but everything actually comes together. You can see all the connection, how everything just goes in line with your personality and your mission in life, everything that you do. And so, yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's the surfing of the chaos, right? That was one of the points in your agenda, which I was hoping we get to. So now I was like chiming in on that, (laughs) connecting the things. That's the true creativity, right? And uh, when I think about chaos... There is this principle of organization that is sort of built in nature, again, going back to nature, right? You know, the rivers, they somehow know how to make their way to the sea. The stars know their orbits or, you know, plants know which way is up when their plant is just seeds. (laughs) And to me, being in touch with that, being open and allowing myself to operate in a chaotic space to then pick those things up and tie them together is what all of it is about (laughs) yeah i love that we actually come into the end of space and i would like to close Mm -hmm. the space with quotes that our listener sarah shared the flower doesn't dream of the bee it blossoms and the bee comes to my understanding this basically means that if we just follow our intuition just do what feels right then whatever comes alive would just be right and have somehow the feeling this is totally fits to your life. Like, as you mentioned, serving the chaos, but you still follow intuition among everything. So you'd somehow come to the right point in your life. I think it's because trusting that there is order in the chaos, you'll just find it when you trust your own way. I love that you brought that quote up because I was going to keep it for the end note from me if I would have had a chance to do that. And I think Sarah then picked it up because I did say it before. But I was going to say that like that same quote, the flowers don't chase the bees, the flowers just are and the bees come. I wanted to use that as, say, my gratitude to all of you for letting me speak here and share my story. And also as a reminder for everybody to stay true to yourself, make sure that you are nurturing yourself as a plant (laughs) to grow the flowers for which the bees will come. (laughs) Thank you for that, Maddie. I love your energy, your enthusiasm in life and inspirations you brought to me also. I'm glad we actually met and connected. Thank you so much for this amazing space. Thank you, everyone who tuned in today on an early Sunday morning. And thank you to our host for the wonderful discussion. Have a wonderful Sunday, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much, Maddie. Very inspirational. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.